How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Tombstone's Takes. I am Tombstone, and I like to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and interesting about books, books, books. And tonight, I want to respond to a couple of videos that I watched this week. Some of them had some asked some interesting questions and had some interesting premises. I've never met these gentlemen. I haven't engaged in their YouTube channels too much. I hope they don't mind me responding to their their videos. But one was a video from booktuber Criminali, and he asked the question, do classics need to be enjoyable? And in response to his video, a gentleman named Michael K. Vaughn made a video that was called Rules for Reading, and then Criminali responded to that video again, talking about his rules for when he DNFs books. And as I watched these videos, I had a few interesting thoughts that came to mind, and I thought that I would share them with you today. I hope that's okay with these gentlemen. I really enjoyed what they had to say. They had an interesting perspective, and I thought I would drop a couple of my two cents worth. So welcome to Tombstone's Takes, where we're going to talk a little bit about do classics need to be enjoyable and what are some of my particular rules for reading. Okay, so the first question, Criminali asked the, posed the question, do classics have to be enjoyable? And the obvious answer to me for that particular question is how do you find how do you define enjoyment or enjoyable? In this case, I think what Criminali meant was, and I don't want to assume, but I, from what I gathered from his video, is it seemed like he's asking, do classics really need to be entertaining? And to me, entertaining and enjoyable are a couple of different things depending on context. Now, the easy answer to whether or not a classic needs to be entertaining, which is a different question than do classics need to be enjoyable, is that no, classics do not need to be entertaining in order to be classics or in order for people to get any kind of value out of them whatsoever. And this all comes back to, again, like I said, what does enjoyable or enjoyment mean? But it also comes down to a couple of questions. So first off, let me ask this. Why do people write in general? Not read, but why do people write? A couple of the reasons why people write, let's just give you a list kind of off the top of my head, is that people write in order to inform others of something. So maybe to give a lesson or to teach. Sometimes you might want to persuade people to your point of view or to present a particular stance on an argument. Another reason that people write is to report on an event or a series of event events. Obviously, one of the reasons that people write is to tell a story or to explain a philosophy or to explore a particular set of values or morality or ethics. Sometimes we write in order to communicate with others. Sometimes we also write to clarify our own particular thoughts or to illustrate those thoughts that we have. These are just a few of the reasons that people write. Obviously, I did include to tell a story, which would include novels or classic novels, short stories, fiction of any kind. Now, thank you for following me on those particular different kinds of reasons that people write. Now, what does this have to do with whether or not classics are enjoyable or entertaining? Both Michael K. Vaughn and Criminali in their videos talked a lot about gaining value from the books that they read. And I think that they agree with me that entertainment doesn't have to be the only factor in reading a classic book or a class, what's considered a classic book, or what has literary merit, or a class, classic novel. 
However, one of the things that I didn't hear them talk about, they talked a lot about gaining value from it. But if we can see that people write for a number of reasons, then that must, it must obviously follow that people read for a number of different reasons. And so the value that you get from reading even a fictional novel is going to be, there's going to be quite a few different reasons that that can happen for just fiction. Obviously, if you're reading nonfiction, you can learn a lesson. You can be informed. You can listen to somebody else's point of view and gain value in ways that are the opposite or that do correspond with that list that I gave you. Now, if you continue down that path, well, what are the kinds of value that people can gain from reading fiction? I have another uh, set uh, or list of answers that I can think of just off the top of my head. What do people get out of reading fiction? Well, you can gain entertainment value. You can gain empathy for others. You can gain a new perspective. You can use reading to have an opportunity to have an exploration of morality or ethics or philosophy in a way that you've never thought of before. You can also gain a sense of how an author an author thinks. And when I say this, I'm, I'm very much a person who believes in separating the art from the artist. However, there are things that are very inherent about writing that directly does come from an author. Sometimes that might be the exploration of morality or ethics or philosophy, and those things are apparent in how much the morality or the ethics or the philosophy are woven into the actual story, but oftentimes it also occurs in the allegory or the metaphors or in the language that the author uses. And you can see how the author thinks by the language that they're using or the allegory or the metaphor. But these are all different ways, whether or not you're gaining empathy for, for a, a new, somebody that you've never could relate to in the past, a new, a new culture, a new way of thought, or whether you're gaining a new perspective of others, those things are value, values that you can gain from reading. And just by sheer fact of gaining those things, you might find that the book or what you are reading has a lot of value and a lot of merit. And those things do not have to, do not have to be, or do not have to equate to entertainment. Now, all of that is a big, long, rambling way of saying this. I can read a classic novel and I can find a new perspective that I've never thought about, or I might see an exploration in morality or ethics or philosophy that I, in a way that I had never thought before. And I might find those things enjoyable, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I would find the narrative entertaining. Yes, so I can find a book enjoyable and I can find it at the same time not necessarily entertaining in the sense of having a strong narrative or a story that is just a gripping tale that makes me want to keep reading and turning page by page. Now, how do my rules for reading impact whether or not I find a, a classic or any book or any fictional tale uh, enjoyable versus entertaining. Obviously, a lot of different things that have value to me I'll find enjoyable. But a couple things, I'm in agreement with Michael Vaughn in the sense that I don't, for the most part, I don't DNF books. Well, that, well, there's some nuance to that because typically 
lot of times, if I don't know what book I'm going to read next, I pick up a book and I just start reading the first couple paragraphs or the first page, page and a half. And if I find it gripping or interesting, then I'll continue reading. But if the if at that moment, the first pa- couple paragraphs or the first page, page and a half, don't grip me right away, I'll, I'll DNF it at that point in the first paragraph, first page or so. And then I, w- I might pick it up again later because sometimes I know that the mood just has to hit you in order to enjoy that book. But when I'm choosing a new book, I'll do that and that's how I pick my books. But once I'm into a narrative, if I get the, the first page, page and a half, and I think that it's interesting, I typically don't DNF books because there's a lot of value that I can get out of them, even if it's learning how authors are telling a tale and I'll, I'll ask a lot of questions about how that author is telling a tale, what works, what doesn't work. And I can see for me how the narrative is structured and I will be able to find something interesting in it, even if I don't DNF that book. Now, yes, for me, I don't DNF books. I don't care if somebody else, I mean, I know people have friends that DNF books all the time. I think that you should read what you want to read. I think that you should DNF what you want to DNF. I don't think there's any rules hard and fast about any of those things. However, however, in my job as a librarian, I work as an academic librarian, which means I work in in college and university settings. And a lot of my job does have to deal with teaching students different kinds of literacy skills. And having said that, I personally have rules for reading for me, and that is to ask any number of questions as I'm reading a book. And I think that it's a great practice that people should be in in order to ask a number of questions about anything that they read, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, the news, a magazine article, uh, a cereal box. One thing that I've found in my work is that people who have learning disabilities, everybody will read something as lo- so long as they're interested in it. You can get kids, you can get students who will tell you that they don't like to read, and if you get them the the right material with the right things that they're interested, they will read anything from a cereal box to a magazine to to a book if you get the right the right topic for them. However, I do see a lot, a lot, a lot of struggles in people who don't know how to ask questions about they from what they read. Anywhere from what does this mean? Where where why should I be reading this? What value? What are the things? How do I feel as I read? Is this true? I see that a lot. People read something, they look at it, they automatically believe it. They don't question where it came from, who wrote it, why it was being written that way. There's all kinds of questions that people can ask from a narrative, including fiction. What are these characters' motivations? Why are they doing this? Would I have done that the same way? Do I not like that character because he didn't act in the same manner that I would have acted? Or, wow, that's interesting. I didn't, I might say, oh, I I, I would have never done that. That's interesting that they, they would have. Maybe I wouldn't even ever thought to have done that. But I do think that it's a good practice that people ask any number of questions in any way, shape, or form as they read. And as they do that, they'll be able to identify the value that they're getting out of the book beyond just entertainment, even if they're only reading for entertainment's sake. And so my piece of advice and the rule for reading for me would be to ask any number of questions. And I would just encourage people that if you're the type that sits down and just reads and doesn't ask any questions about the text as you're reading, learn, learn to ask, learn to ask a, a couple of questions and see if it doesn't impact your reading. And that is in no way, shape or form saying that I think that you should open a book, maybe a mystery book and say, oh, I want to try and figure this out. Who did it? I'm going to figure it. That's not what I'm saying at all. 
But I am saying that learning how to, to read between the lines for the interesting questions is a valuable tool that you can use for your life and that will make reading much more interesting to you. In the end, I appreciate Criminali and Michael Gavon. I don't know if they'll ever see this video, but I'm gonna tag them with it. I appreciate them letting me get my thoughts out about asking some questions and about delinea delineating and, and enumerating exactly in my mind uh, a couple of different ways of identifying what value you can get out of reading a book. So in the end, I already said in the end, so that in the end, in the end, in the end. In the end, to the original question that started that back and forth between Criminali and Michael K. Vaughan, do classics need to be enjoyable? I, I, I think what Criminali meant was do they need to be entertaining? And I don't think that they need to be entertaining, but I do think that they can be they should be enjoyable, but I think that they should be enjoyable because of the types of value that you gain out of it and that it's very easy to be able to illuminate, well, what kind of value am I gaining from it? Am I learning something? Am I gaining empathy for a, a new culture or a new race or a new perspective of, of people? Maybe an exploration, a nuanced exploration of morality or ethics or, or something of that nature. And if you can identify that value, exactly what it is, then it will be enjoyable to you. And I think, I think in some ways, Criminali was trying to say that same thing, but I don't know if, if he was quite as uh, precise in some, in some ways. It, it's difficult to be precise at times when you're turning on the camera and letting, letting your thoughts roam. But I do think that it's an interesting discussion uh, that should be had now and again uh, among readers and, and friends and people who like to, to pick up a good book. So thanks for having me. If you like this video, please give me a like and a subscribe and let me know either A, what some of your practices are for reading. Do you DNF books? I don't DNF books. Or what kinds of value do you get out of reading? Do you read surely for entertainment or do you read for other purposes? Do you read to learn things? Do you read to, 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 to gain a new perspective or to maybe be persuaded to a new point of view? Tell me those things in the comments below and thanks for watching.